Hey everybody, welcome to another episode in the Lens Wizard Lightroom series. Today in Lightroom we're talking about teeth whitening. Now this is an edit that can very easily be done in Lightroom and you don't have to go over into Photoshop. So in this video we're going to get right to whitening the teeth and then afterwards I'm going to talk a little bit about color cast and some other issues and why it happens to the teeth. So right now we're in library module we want to get over into our develop module and we can hit the keyboard shortcut of D. So you see we have our beautiful model Juan her name is. Juan has a beautiful smile and let's zoom in on that smile and I chose this image in particular because it has the color checker in it and it she has a color cast on her teeth and we can see her teeth really good in this one so with that said the tool we want to use is the adjustment brush it's right up here and you see it gives the meta tag gives me adjustment brush K meaning I can use the keyboard shortcut of K and then that opens up my control panel now right here the last effect or preset that I used will be listed so click on that and it gives you all these presets you know and if you go right down towards the bottom you will see teeth whitening now before we actually go over and whiten the teeth let's look at our controls and see what it did what what is teeth whitening it's giving us an exposure the preset is giving us 0.40 and the only other thing it's giving us is saturation and that is minus 60. So let's go over and this thing that's moving around right now is called a pin. We call these pins and you're going to drop the pin in the area that you want to edit. Now after I drop the pin, also, now look at my brush. I have an inner circle and an outer circle. The inner circle where the crosshairs are is actually my brush and that outer circle is the feather. Okay, so for whitening teeth, now this is how I do it. I like to go down here and make sure I have auto mask on. I want to have it, it on. Auto mask is going to help me not go over onto other stuff. So I'm going to reduce my brush size and I can do that with my scroll wheel reduce my brush size and stay within the tooth and auto mask is going to help me when I paint to stay away from the gums so let's get right to painting and now you have to know I'm using a Wacom tablet but you can very easily do this with a mouse um, this is not you know a hard technique to do and I kind of want to, you know, I want to reduce that. Now you notice when I paint, the pin goes away. I want to try to stay off the lips, and auto mask is going to help me. It's uh, as long as I don't touch the lip really bad, auto mask is going to keep it off. Okay, so I think I've got everything. How do I know I got everything? If I hit the keyboard shortcut of O for and O will show me my mask overlay and I can see right now that I forgot to get that tooth right there. Now another thing that is going to happen is the more I paint the more auto mask is going to spread this out. So I've already went over everything one time if I go over everything again it's going to bring that mask up a little closer to those gums it's going to select a little more and if I go over it too much it's going to jump on to the gums because it's going to think that I want to edit gums I don't and I want to do the same thing with the lip so I, I've pretty much I'm looking good and if I hit O I can get rid of it now also know that I can also turn my mask on and off down here right just like that so okay mask is off and it's bright. I mean, those teeth are too bright now. Now, this is the most important part of this tutorial right here. And that is you, after you want to zoom in to make your edit, if you hit the space bar, you can click and zoom out. I can hide that pin by going down here and clicking this show edit pins. That's your control right there. 
And now if I go back over here into my adjustment panel for the adjustment brush, the control panel, I should say, I have a little switch right here and it lets me turn it on and off, on and off. And I can kind of see that, you know, yeah, I like it. It made it brighter, but it made it too bright. I might need sunglasses to look at her now. So what I want to do very simply, go up here to exposure, put the cursor right over top of it and take your hand off your mouse and just reach down and do a left click. Don't move the mouse and now scroll your wheel and you can go in increments of 10 either way you scroll. And as long as you don't move the mouse or the cursor, it'll stay locked onto that. So I go down to 20, still in my eye right here on my monitor, it's looking a little bright. Go down to 10 and you know what? I'm very finicky about this. I am going to put in 0.07, enter, and that's what I'm gonna go with. Now, I still have my crosshairs, so if I wanna zoom in, if I hit my space bar, it gives me my little magnifying glass there and I can zoom in, and I can also turn it off, on and off, while I'm zoomed in. And to me, that looks a lot more realistic. She does have white teeth, and it just looks more realistic that way. So, with that said, I can now leave the adjustment brush by either clicking the adjustment brush icon up here, or clicking done down here, or simply just hitting the keyboard shortcut of K, and it takes me out of it. Now, the one thing that you're, you're done, but I want to show you in case you want to revisit that edit and you go back again, okay, well, you would simply get back into the adjustment brush, K. And a couple of things, and the reason this is kind of important here, you go back in and it gives you another pin, okay? So if we, you know, hold down our space bar, zoom in, uh, I want to re-edit that that I just done, but it's giving me another pin and that made a weird mark. Well, the problem is, I'm going to hit Control Z to back up. The problem is I have my pins hidden. So if I show my pins, and as you can see, what it's doing is giving me another pin. And if I put that down, so what I want to do I want to, if I move the new pin that they give me right over top of, it shows me the mask and then I just click and now I'm back to those controls where I was at before and I can edit that pin. Also, if I move over top of it and I right click, I can duplicate the pin or I can delete the pin. And another thing that I can do is I can move over top of it and I can grab a hold of it and I can move the pin. Now I wouldn't want to do that for teeth whitening but if I was doing something else it may be appropriate to move a pin. So just wanted to show you that that when you go back in to re-edit you want to get back on the pin that you were on. Okay so real quick let's get out of here. I'm going to actually go and I'm going to reset this so I'm back to where I was and I'm going to get out of here and we're going to talk about color cast a little bit. Sometimes the color cast can come from white balance. It can be a white balance issue. So if there's other things in the image that are supposed to be white that are not white, um, it might be a white balance issue. And it can also come from reflection off of something else in the area, such as just for example, standing next to a red fire truck. The fire truck might not be in the, the crop of the photo, but it's close enough that in bright sunlight it's casting a red shine on her teeth. Or it could even be on the skin or on clothing for that matter. So color cast can come from a few different things, but color cast can also come from editing. In the case of this image right here, and I'm going to zoom in on this and show you that I'm going to set the white balance. I'm going to go over here. Now this, you have to know, this image has already been edited in Photoshop and then brought over into here for the final and that's when I noticed I had a color cast. So I pick up my eyedropper and if I go down here and I pick this, 
if I look over here, it didn't do anything. It went to custom, white balance, but nothing happened. That's because the white balance is perfect. But why then do I have a color cast on here? See, this is where it gets a little weird and complex uh, with when you're editing stuff. So when I was over into Photoshop, I added some contrast and I added some like sunlighting tints and different things to make the image look the way it really should have, the way she was standing there. So if I back out and I as shot, okay, no change, but if I hit auto, all of a sudden, boom, her teeth are white. But the problem is now her skin is the wrong color. She is an Asian lady. She has darker skin. She's a Thai lady. So I know what the color of her skin. I, I know this woman. I know how she looks. I've seen her in person. And her skin is supposed to be that color. And when her skin is that color, the teeth have a weird color. And this came from editing. This came from adding contrast and altering some stuff over in Photoshop. And I come back and everything looks perfect, but the teeth are wrong. So I just wanted to point that out. That's something that can happen. And there's, a, you know, you have your other issues of white balance and something can be reflecting in the ambient light spectrum. So that's how you whiten teeth in Photoshop, and that's some of the issues that can cause you to have to whiten teeth because, as we know, most people have white teeth. Most people have a nice smile, but you'll end up with this weirdness to the teeth when you go to edit. Okay, everybody, check me out on social media, uh, Lens Wizard on Instagram, Reckless Pixel on Facebook, and check out the rest of it videos in the Lens Wizard Lightroom series. We keep adding more to it all the time throughout 2017. Have a great day, everybody.